Just as we've been showing you tonight how partisan the impeachment hearings have been, a similar thing's playing out on cable news every night. Fox says impeachment is a witch hunt in the deep state trying to take down the president. Other networks, they're spelling out, I'd argue, the facts and the constitutional basis for impeachment. But a new book says there's a pox on both of their houses. It's called Hate Incorporated. Why well, today's media makes us despise one another. Matt Taibbi is its author, and he's also a contributing editor for Rolling Stone. And Matt, you know, I, I do this analogy where I run in the morning, and if you just look at the monitor on the treadmill and what they're looking at in the morning, I don't think you could have said this 10 years ago with as much um, surety, but you, you, you already know who the person is. I know that's not as simple as I make it out to be, but... But that's how we've gotten so tribalized now. Um, it's not my imagination. It's got much worse in the last 10 years, five years, whatever time frame you want to use than it used to be. I think it's actually worse than that. It's not only you can tell who the person is, but when you turn on the program, you know what the take is going to be uh, on coverage uh, automatically ahead of time, which is a, new, a relatively new feature in news media. In other words, Back in the, the 80s, when we had really only three networks and they were all going for, this, for the whole audience and not just for a segment of it, um, you, could, you could still be surprised by what you saw in the news. But now, when you turn on Fox or MSNBC, you know what their point of view is going to be on pretty much any news story that you've heard about, which I think is a, is a sharply negative development in, in media. And, and you're right, absolutely right. It, it totally contributes to the tribalization of the country. You know, if I'm being honest, I just looked at myself this week um, when we had the inspector general testify and obviously with his report before it. And I immediately was looking at the story um, and I saw in it what I wanted to see. Um, yeah, there were screw ups, but I said to myself there was a predicate for the investigation. He says at the end of the day, and I want to believe Horowitz, that this thing wasn't politically motivated. Um, and at the end of the day, the Steele dossier didn't play as much into it. I don't know if five years ago I, I would have looked at the report the same way, and I probably might have even led with a different thing. Is my God, did they really screw up um, at the FBI with this? They lied, etc. And I think that's an honest reflection of this. And I, I don't buy the argument that Trump, hey, he's just a symptom, he's not the cause. Yeah, that's true. But man, Matt, he has intentionally you know, stuck the poker in everybody to have them pick sides before they're even given a chance to try and figure out how to process this stuff. Well, you're right. I mean, it's kind of a chicken and the egg argument because Donald Trump is, he's sort of the perfect modern uh, media consumer product because you, you can't really have a neutral take on him. You are either sort of wildly against him or wildly for him. And almost anything that he has an opinion on, there there isn't a whole lot of nuance in the middle ground. Um, he's... It, it, it tends to be what, if he has a take on a news story, you either completely agree with it or completely disagree with it. Um, what you're talking about in terms of you know, watching something like the Horowitz hearing and already seeing it uh, in terms of what you want to see, I think, you know, you and I are both in the media. One of the things that happens when you're in the press is we now have this process where we, where we train ourselves to commoditize news stories. In other words, we look at the news and we think about how we're going to sell this to our audiences instantaneously. And if you watch the Horowitz hearing and you have a left-leaning audience, you're already just instantaneously automatically processing that story in terms of how it's most easily presented to your audience. Now, I think that's an automatic thing now. It doesn't necessarily happen. Uh, that wasn't what we would have done years ago. And you're absolutely right. I think in a prior age, people would have been more ready to say something like, wow, it's incredibly scary that you can get a FISA warrant that easily. Like that might have been the reaction previously. But now I think when you watch it, that's you're more likely to have that other reaction. Um, you did something in this book um, that I haven't seen, which is, you know, for example, I read a book of the same genre audience of one where really it's talking about on the right they're only worried about what Donald Trump is going to say in the media here and the reaction that then flows. You go after um, everybody, in effect, um, and don't even spare yourself in the process. Right on the cover, you got Hannity and you got Maddow. And you make it clear in the book that you're friends with Rachel Maddow, but do you really think that there is this equivalency between the two? And I say that because 
you know, I try to sample a lot here to at least have an idea where different folks are coming from things, but Hannity doesn't go through a pretense of going through facts. Maddo, she'll go through transcripts on the air. Now, obviously, you know right away where she's coming from on this, Matt, but at the end of the day, there's an attempt to incorporate fact into the reporting. You really think it's six of one, half dozen the other? Well, there's two things here. First of all, what I'm talking about in the book is the way the business has developed. And whatever you might want to think about the factual content of Fox and MSNBC, their commercial strategies are exactly identical. And what I'm talking about is, you know, in the 70s and 80s, CBS, ABC, and NBC, their strategies were, we want to get the entire audience. So that's why they had a, a more neutral sounding broadcast, uh, because they were attempting to get everybody. They wanted to get Democrats, uh, Republicans, conservatives, liberals, whatever it was. And so they were not skewing their, their uh, broadcasts for one demographic or another. After the advent of Fox, uh, Fox discovered that you can basically pick out one part of the audience and dominate it by feeding them news that you know that they're going to like ahead of time. And you know, other networks resisted that strategy for a while, but that's basically what MSNBC's strategy is as well. They've picked a different audience, they pick different facts, and they pick different news stories, but they're definitely picking stories in order to cater to a certain audience. Now, when was the last time you saw anything on uh, MSNBC that was heavily critical of the Democratic Party? Uh, it just doesn't really exist anymore. So there's that. That's what I would say is that they're they're using the same strategy of picking a demographic and trying to dominate it, as opposed to getting the whole audience. The second thing is I would say Rachel Maddow and MSNBC, they've had a terrible record in the last few years, especially on things like the Russia story. They were terrible on that, and they were, they were wholeheartedly leaned into the idea that the. Trump's presidency was imminently going to end, uh, that, the, you know, the walls were closing in and that he was, you know, some kind of Russian agent and that none of that panned out to be true. So I, I would I would caution against automatically thinking that that's the case. I think there is there's an element of the same kind of instinct towards hyperbole that that has marked what's gone on in Fox. Yeah, and I think um, even I'm guilty. You, you saw as a candidate, Trump, um, the one and only group or person that would be beyond reproach would be Putin. Then you saw it throughout the administration, punctuated by Helsinki. And given how transactional he is, people made a leap that said there has to be something there and there has to be becomes there is something there before the evidence ever borne it out or and still hasn't. So to that end, though, the conclusion I got was that the public wants I hate to use fair and balanced, but they want news. They want unabridged news, and they'll consume it. However, everybody does this for the almighty buck now for the big networks. If they thought that that was a model that would sell, why wouldn't MS or CNN that have been struggling to find that market share, why wouldn't they do that, the idea that we'll present it and then you folks reach your own conclusion? They, they clearly don't think that can sell in this marketplace. Yeah, and I think they're mistaken. Um, I, I think that, and I've, I've come across uh, up against this mindset in the business for quite a while now. There's, there's an idea, people have an idea of where the audience is and they're, they're consistently wrong about that. Um, and I, I, right now, I think if you had something like neither side news, right, where people were just sort of reporting the facts in the, in the way they used to, uh, w without the, the editorializing that we're seeing in the modern media landscape, I think that would be enormously popular and profitable, um, but it's difficult to do in the modern uh, landscape for some reason. Uh, editors have not wrapped their heads around it. And I think we saw in 2016 when Trump came along that a lot of people who run media companies found that it was incredibly profitable to be on one side or the other of the Trump phenomenon. You know, people like Les Moonves from CBS said, you know, he may not be good for the country, but he's great for our bottom line. And I think that's one of the reasons that we've seen an acceleration of this um, tribalization in the media landscape. People are trying to, to capitalize on the Trump phenomenon, which has been hugely profitable. I write about this in the book. You know, the cable companies have seen profits go up by 30 or 40 percent since Trump uh, became a candidate in 2015. So that, I think that's one of the reason, things that we're responding to here is that the, the news business has, has changed wildly just in the last three or four years. The book again, Hate Inc., Why Today's Media Makes Us Despise One Another. You don't have to guess. 
where the author's going there. Matt Taibbi, great job. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks so much, Richard. Appreciate it. Take care. And coming up next, everyone, the shocking truth about sex trafficking of children and how the Internet is making the problem even worse. After the break, an attorney who is taking on the big tech companies like Facebook, she'll explain her distinctive legal strategy to make them police themselves.